there was a girl at ACL that had dropped her phone into the toilette into like the blue waters of a porta potty at the end of the day like it's your phone plans up her friend was holding the door open Mm -mm. for her and everyone it was like more interesting than the dixie chicks this girl put her almost full body no she was getting her phone full body like you could only see her waist and i was like there's no effing way pulls it out it looked like what you would think it would look like and then she gets her friend's water bottle no and dumps it on it and like washes it off i'm like so the phone's broken first and then the phone's more broken now but at least there's no poop on it but now you <sighs> just put it in your pocket and i'm saying go goodbye watch Dixie i'm saying goodbye to the phone with your poopy little phone yeah oh my god poopy little phone she's That's pulling fine. out her poopy little phone to Ooh, fill the Dixie stop saying poopy little phone sorry <laughs> <laughs> This pumpkin's feeling really good on my lap. Isn't it just like weighted blanket times ten? It's kind of making my. I'm gonna o- s- I'm gonna sleep with a pumpkin on me. I might also. It's kind of it's kind of making my ovaries tingle. I kind of want like a baby. Oh, on my lap. you're getting baby fever. Yeah. from the pumpkin. I'm more so just getting like total relaxation mode. Um, this baby, I mean pumpkin. Um, well, we should do a challenge on this episode to only call each other by words. By your name. Words that. Or start with the first letter of our name, but aren't our name. We used to do that all the time. Yeah. Like that was our running bit when we first yeah. kind of met. Yeah. I would call you like compost bin. I would call you Brooks and Dunn. Yeah. Coroner's office. Bag. Colored pencil. Okay, fun. That's a fun challenge. Yeah. I feel like I don't say your name that much during No, I was the just thinking about it. I guess we're not Unless just I'm chatting. Just, yeah. Um, Hey guys. Welcome back to Brooke and Kelsey Make a Podcast. I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Well, how was the drive? It was here? easy. It was so easy. Good. Good. I'm I glad was you got here. Making well. out with Cody this morning. Really? That's amazing. Yep. That's so sweet. It's really cool to just make out with Cody. Yeah. I bet. Um, thank you guys for having me back. <laughs> I am Connor. If you if you forgot, um, it was nice to have Kelsey. I watched that episode. It made me sick to my stomach, the totally. first, like, the opener, because I was like, damn, this is really good. They should make a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> These girls should be making a podcast. Um, but it was fun with her. It was so it was fun. fun to have Kelsey on. It was great to have Kelsey. You know, it's some girl time. Of course. Sister, sister. Yeah. Um, but so glad you're back. Thanks. Missed you so much. I missed you. I missed this set. Yeah. It just feels, it's it kind of feels like safe, a fresh start, a to be honest, you know? Yeah. Before we get into everything, yeah. I want to hear all about your weekend. We have a few just, like... Announcement. We have housekeeping. Housekeeping. Yeah. That's what that's what yeah. I want to say. Ooh. Are you- Incredible itch on my ass cheek. <laughs> that I wasn't gonna let you move forward. <laughs> okay. With. Totally. Glad you took care of that. <sighs> okay. Really quick note. Next week, our episode is coming out on Wednesday. That's gonna go ahead and be episode thirty nine. Jeez. Crazy to think about. That's coming out on Wednesday instead of Thursday. Yeah. Um <clears throat> yeah. So next week, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Episode thirty nine. It's freaky. We have so much so much that's going to happen in the next, like, two months with this podcast. Isn't it crazy to think, just, like, thinking in terms of time, Yeah, that, like, probably you haven't experienced the best day and the worst day of your life yet? Ew. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like to think about no. that. But I guess I do. The worst? Th- th- that's horrible. Womp, womp. womp yeah, that's womp, womp. That, that's that, really, <laughs> that really does suck. Cause I, every yeah. day I think I experience the worst day at of least life. something... Yeah. Like, no, it, think about the worst day of your life so far and know that like it's going to get worse at one point. I always think about that's that. That's a good perspective yeah. to have. That's a good way to start um, off. But that being said, think about the best day of your life so far. You're going to experience something even better. Yeah. We should start doing Rose and Dorn. Oh. So that we can keep track of stuff like that. Good because point. We, we, then we can have like those things that they have in factories where it's like six days since last tragic accident and then we could cross it off to zero Mm -hmm. after you have your new worst day. I went through a phase when my family would do Rosebud Thorn at dinner and I would always say I have no rose. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just a kid. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Another note is that some of you may know by now we have bonus content. Yep. Close Friends. Yep. That's the name of our bonus episode. We have a blast on it. It's a shoes off space. And we'll give you more details on this later, especially in the close friends episode. Yeah. But we're making 
a close friend's Instagram story on B- BNC, our regular Instagram, our main Instagram, for the people that are subscribed to close friends. So you'll get exclusive close friends like content, yeah. Instagram content from us. Yeah, true. Yeah. We're uh, basically never before seen. Yeah, unhinged. We use that a lot. Shoes off. Right now, it's just I think it's just Brooke and I and a couple others on the close friends, and we kind of joke around and and kind of do bits, and we kind of post nudes and things yeah. like that on that close friends account. Yeah. And genuinely, we do. Um, we're kind of just like addicted horn dogs for close friends co- for bonus content. Yeah, lately. I love Bone Con. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's 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 fun. So. We'll have more details uh, on how to join the Instagram close friends on uh, the close the bonus content episode for today. Yes, which is available at TMG Studios TV. TV. Yes, yes, you guys know that. And the Brooke and Connor tier. Well, we can talk about the, me defeating Zach at the last second of fantasy football after you tell us about your weekend. Well, no, I was just gonna say I met a lot of people this weekend when I was in Austin that do that listen to close friends mm-hmm. probably more so than. That came up to me for just standard episodes. So really? It's cool to hear that the bonus content is really coming through reaching. for those folks. It's reaching. Yeah. Well, um, as I've said, it's a shoes off space. Yeah. So I encourage you to join it. I know. It's it's awesome. Um, yeah, but Brooke, uh, if anyone's keeping up with our fantasy league, I'm fighting for last. Uh, no, I think you're like right below me and I'm fourth. There's Maybe you're two below us, me. Right? There's eight of us. Okay. You might be in sixth. I think I'm in sixth, and then let's see here. I'm in. I think I'm in sixth, and then Walid, and then Noel. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. 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 Go. But I'm in fourth, which is very exciting because that's if you divide everything in half, I'm in the top half. And it, which is amazing for the girls. That's what I was going to say. I think. Yeah. Like, I'm th- I'm three wins and two losses, right? Yeah. The, that yeah, makes you sense are to me. nice. This week, and I was supposed to lose this week. I only, like, understand how fantasy works through the percentages that it says. So it said that Zach was winning, like, 89%, and I was winning 11%, which I don't exactly know what that means, but it's not good for me, is what I can understand. Right. So I, I and I thought fantasy ended on Sunday night. So basically Sunday night I was looking really bad. I forgot about up, Monday. Forgot about I didn't Monday, know. I didn't know about Monday football, to be quite honest. So I had accepted my loss, and clearly Zach had accepted my loss yeah. because he went on foul tip when they record on Monday and said, I beat Brooke, which yeah. is like, yeah, you did, as far as I'm concerned. Here's him saying it, by the way. Uh, so far, I even have, of course you I have, have the most two, plays. five and oh, the audio. someone step up to the plate. <laughs> But that was him saying. That was him saying it. And then he had to address. And then he had to breaking news apologize to me because Monday I had two teams, two players that still hadn't played on two different teams. Yep. This is my understanding of the situation. And in order for me to win, the only way I could win is if both of those players did something absolutely incredible. Totally. Each of them did something absolutely incredible. What they do? They got me the points. Yeah. Like Really, there was a very slim chance of me winning, and they they did it. They came my, out my said, players. Women's stories, yeah. are important. Exactly, and they stood up for you, and they they made it. And happen. they it was it just you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's awesome. And, yeah, it was awesome. Seriously, it's cool to see the end. I, I like cannot stress enough like how much I love fantasy. Yeah, and I never saw this coming for me. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll watch the Super Bowl now? I do. Yeah, I would really love to understand. The, the connection between the game and my and my fantasy like I would like to know like what's getting me the points who's kind of up there and on my screen I think that's the next step for me yeah totally there's a I just keep watching the percentages on the app numbers are good too yeah you're just a numbers girl at yeah. the end of the day I know that's what I've always said um but yeah congrats. But yeah that's thank awesome. you that was really exciting this is a new week I won as well but it just was like a given who did I play Noel. Oh yeah, Noel's toast, and I think all of his players are are out and injured. Yeah, and they're but he still has them in. It's hard to win when when no one's playing. Yeah, Um, God bless him though. Anyways, yeah, so it's good to be back. We're uh, we're getting back in the swing of things. I'm a little rusty. I feel like like really yeah, I'm having trouble kind of not being shy. Oh, don't worry, it's okay to be shy. Yeah, and if you need to take a break, we can take breaks. That's the thing. Yeah. 
Don't be shy. Well, I've been gone for a long time. Yeah, like, cause I, you've been gone for a few weeks. I left. I went to my parents' house, went to that wedding. Yeah. How was the wedding? Good. Can I tell you two really embarrassing <laughs> things that yeah. I did? Yeah, please. Okay, so I was in Houston for this wedding. And I had a great time. Got to see all my high school friends. Haven't really been back in a long time to go see my high school mm-hmm. friends. I don't know if I'm very, very... Oh, oof, I don't want to say this. Basically, like... Um, no, I can't say, say it. this. No, say I can't it. say this. Because I think that they'll probably hear this. But basically... I kind of like force my way into one of my friends' oh. weddings that's into, uh, that's at the end of the month. And when you say into it, you mean like... I'm a groomsman yes. now, <laughs> and it's at the end of the month. And it, w- you know, it was kind of like, I was like, oh, I can't believe you didn't invite me to be a groomsman. And he was like, right. like backed him into a corner like a rat. And then he's like, well, you can totally do it. And I was like, okay, give me the website for the ducks. And then I signed up, and now I'm in the wedding. And Yeah. You know, so that happened. Totally. I also had another thing. If you listen to Close Friends, you'd know this, but... When we were at the actual wedding, it was a Catholic wedding. I'm not f- super familiar with the ins and outs of Catholicism. Mm-hmm. I dabble here and there. But mostly when I'm in church, I'm kind of thinking about stuff. Yeah. Right you know, I need that. to do my, when is the tax deadline? Yeah. When is the tax deadline? You already missed it. No, it is in three days. We just paid them. It's in three days. I filed for extension. Oh, okay. Um, You know, I'm thinking about all this, all my to-do list stuff. Anyways, they get to the part where you actually take communion at a wedding. And that's... That's the blood, the blood of Jesus of Christ as well as his body. Yes. So just munching on... Wine his, and bread. In the highest of senses, we're going full cannibal on Jesus's, obviously, his... <laughs> it, it's it's a metaphorical... Right. Cannibal situation. So, <laughs> it's metaphorical. It's a metaphor. <laughs> no, it's not. No, no, that's fine. It literally... Yeah. Ha- like, I mean, whatever. Um... Sorry, we're going full carnivore inside the, okay. the house of God right? on Jesus, but in a metaphorical sense. So I didn't know what the protocol was. I'm sitting next to one of my friend's moms. I'm doing this every four seconds, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But I'm mostly just kind of mm-hmm. like keeping my peripherals open to make sure everyone thinks that I know what I'm doing. We're kneeling, we're standing, we're kneeling, we're up, we're crossing our hearts. And uh, then he goes, the the pastor goes uh come up we're gonna do communion if like whatever and i was like okay here we go i was on the aisle so i went out first and everyone followed me and i'm like i don't know what to do so i go up and the person behind me my friend's mom goes cross your arms when you get up there and like bow i'm like no one else is crossing their arms or bowing okay. is she setting me up for like, a joke and i do it and he's just staring at me and i was like are you not gonna feed me right you were starving i was probably. hungry yeah for one of those little crackers yeah um and he was like, no. And I was like, well, how come everyone else? And he was like, kind of like, go. And I was like, peace be with you, I guess, because we had said that a hundred uh-huh. times. But I was kind of bitter. And that was probably not totally. the move to do. But totally. um, it all caught on the mic. So the whole mass of people heard that little mm-hmm. interaction. So that was awesome. Um, but I learned that the reason I bowed is because my friend's mom knew that I wasn't Catholic. So uh-huh. she was like, well, that's what you do when you're not Catholic, oh. just to serve so I just look like a brat. Right. Well. And not a nominational brat. I don't think you look like a brat. Yeah. I think that's just like it's probably standard if you're not Catholic. I wouldn't know. Yeah. Well. Anyways. Now I don't know. you live and you learn. You live and you learn. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to think I haven't like what I haven't told you. Well, how was ACL? ACL was awesome. We saw the Dixie Chicks on Friday, which was great. We got like randomly one of our friends was like, come to the front of the uh-huh. stage. And as I, because I had to go to the bathroom. Um, which was a horrible experience. I can't even imagine. Yeah, you would hate it. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. There was a girl at ACL that had dropped her phone into... The toilette? Into, like, the blue waters of a porta potty At the end of the day, like, it's your phone plans up. Her friend was holding the door open Mm-mm. for her, and everyone... It was, like, more interesting than the Dixie Chicks. This girl put her almost full body... No. ...in, like, a... As if, as if she was, it was with the same intensity that like, what's that dog that told the whole town that there was someone that had fallen in the well? I'm not familiar with that story. Are you Boy Who Cried Wolf? No. Okay. Because that's a wolf. And I was talking about a border collie. Okay. I don't know him. Um, does anyone know what I'm talking about? 
Lassie? Lassie. 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 In the same intensity that she was going to save the person that okay. Lassie was warning the town about. She was getting her phone full body like you could only see her waist. And I was like, there's no effing way. Pulls it out. It looked like what you would think no. it would look like. No. And then she gets her friend's water bottle. No. And dumps it on it and like washes it off. I'm like, so the phone's broken first and then the phone's more broken now. But at least there's no poop on it. But now you <sighs> just put it in your pocket. And I'm saying go goodbye. Watch Chick. I'm saying goodbye to the phone. With your poopy little phone? Yeah. Oh my god, poopy little phone. She's That's pulling not... out her poopy little phone to film Ooh, the Dixie Stop chick. saying poopy little phone. Sorry. <laughs> that is so rough. Shitty little phone. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Away Travel. Away makes suitcases, bags, and other travel accessories designed to make moving through the world a lot more seamless. Which is a good thing because travel makes us better people by giving us different perspectives true mm -hmm. so no matter where you're going you can rely on away's range of travel products to solve real travel problems and get you out there yep first of all this is a cool sponsor to get because it's one that i use totally and there's nothing cooler than feeling like you look cool at the airport especially when there's so much sexual tension <laughs> just in every gate that you enter and it's like yeah i got my way and i look really sleek 007 style and also it's got a lock on it it's just it's cool totally Nice of my other ones. Away offers a range of suitcases, bags, and other travel essentials that are made of different materials like polycarbonate and aluminum in a variety of colors and sizes. So whatever you're packing, wherever you're going, Away has a luggage that will make your next trip more seamless. Every suitcase comes with an interior organization system, which is awesome. That's a big one for underwear and socks and stuff. That includes a built-in compression pad to help you pack more in and a hidden and removable laundry bag that separates your dirty clothes. It's awesome. All of Away suitcases are built to last with durable, lightweight exteriors that can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers. Four 360 degree spinner wheels guarantee the smoothest roll, even through the most hectic of airports and stations. And a TSA approved combination lock keeps all your belongings safe. I love that lock. With a sleeve that slides over your suitcase, Away suitcases and bags work seamlessly together and move as one. Away offers free shipping and returns on non-personalized orders within the contiguous United States, Canada, and the US. And UK. Plus, there's a 100-day free trial on everything Away makes. Take the product out on the road, live with it, travel with it, even get lost with it for 100 days. If you decide it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period. No ifs, ands, or asterisks. Nice. Yeah. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials including their best-selling suitcases and bags at awaytravel.com slash B-A-N-D-C. That's awaytravel.com slash B-A-N-D-C. Anyway, so I watched that happen, which was cool. I mean, it's just was that the highlight? see the depths of... Yeah, the depths where, that people will go for where we'll their go for little Instagram devices, story, yeah. To show people you're at ACL. Wow. Yeah, and Ooh. then I... But when I was walking up, it was... Um, cowboy take me away oh my god that's... and i was walking down the middle part because we were you you kind of like walk down the middle part where like you know and uh i want to touch the earth to think of that break girl having that experience while that song is playing while it was playing yeah. but i was like torn do i watch this poopy little girl get her poopy little phone out of this yeah situation or should i watch the Dixie chicks and at the end of the day i had to make a Executive decision to go watch the Dixie Chicks. Oh, chick. see, I think you watched instead of, instead of the Poopy Chick. I think you watched. She... Go on, sorry. I think you watched the Poopy Chick while that song is playing. Like that's like Religious. the perfect soundtrack for that experience. Yeah. Cowboy, take me at the end of the day. Cowboy, take me away. I don't want to be here anymore. No you cowboy's know? taking her away. Yeah. So I walked up. We watched. It was freaking awesome. And then that night, went to like natural party whatever but it was every night we kind of stayed out until three in the morning four in the morning but it was like everybody like adults that's how the kind of thing goes um so Cody and kelsey saturday night they were at the bar that i used to go to in college i texted okay. Ke kelsey text me and goes if you're from austin you know this kelsey text me come meet us at the ranch i go the ranch like on 36th street which is a street in austin with all the bars she goes yeah and i was like no way um so we did that i don't think we saw anyone else really of notoriety but pink played she soared through the air oh wow like pink does um, i thought it was is, i thought acl was only country no uh -oh. that's stagecoach oh, oh, oh no like red hot chili peppers were there um that's it that's like amazing. i guess i don't have any good stories i met a lot of people oh yeah let's see um 
pink. We saw Flume on Saturday. That's that's who we saw. Oh. But Diplo and Lil Nas X came out. That was cool. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Paramore came. Oh, Paramore fun. came and brought back that song that they said that they would never play again. Which one? Misery Business. Oh. Na 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 na. No. One. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Love makes you love. Yeah. Same one. Na, na, na. By the way, that's exactly good for you by Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. It's the exact same. Yeah, song. that's a thing on TikTok where people are like, "Oh the wow!" Same exact I was letter. shocked. I was like, "Is yeah. Olivia Rodriguez?" Yeah, no, no. It yeah. was Paramore. That's so it. got to watch her, which is cool. And that's straight up all I have for you. And I'm so sorry. I have really nothing. No, that's okay. I've just never been to a music festival. Yeah, and that's something that I would love to continue not going to. Well, just let's like keep but. keep talking. I want to pull up the notes of that TikTok oh. that I was going to make because I want to see if this. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, I just, like, there's nothing that appeals to me, like, at all. Like, day drinking, can't do it. Concerts, limit is, like, an hour and a half. Need to be sitting. I don't think there are chairs at music festivals. Yeah. I could sit on the ground, but I'd get trampled. Yeah. Dehydration? Yeah. No. Sleeping not in my own bed by 930? Not interested. Yeah. Yeah, not interested. It's fascinating. You had a good word for it yesterday. And circling back to the Dixie Chicks, gaslighting. You're right. We've all gaslit ourselves into being like music festivals are awesome. Music festivals, what they're going to go ahead and do is combine the worst parts of concerts with the worst parts of going to the airport with the worst parts of camping and then sell you a ticket for $400 and be like, this is going to be the time of your life. Meanwhile, the whole time you're kind of just like fighting to stay. It's almost like, it's literally almost like lost or survivor. I agree. I feel... I almost feel proud of myself that I haven't paid to put myself in that experience yeah. ever. I mean, it's essentially like you can call any of these festivals. They're just Zara festival. Right. Like, it's just getting dressed to take an Instagram photo at this thing. You're not going to have good seats. Say, say, say your goodbyes to your friends. You'll never see them again once, right. you, once you enter the gates or go to drop your phone in the shitty poo-poo machine. Yeah. And that's it. And then you pay $12 for a warm beer or... You can share your hydro flask with your eight friends that you're you're gonna get mono from. It'll be on your feet for twelve hours. Yeah. It's just like all together like a pretty gnarly experience. Yeah, totally. I'm totally uninterested. I had the best time this year because I didn't know I was even going, so I didn't look at the lineup, and I only went with three of my friends. Met up with people there, but we weren't like married, like attached at the hip like mm-hmm. previously. And we'd go in at four or five p.m., be gone by eight, and we see like two shows right. at the back. That sounds okay. And it was awesome. That sounds okay. We fully ate meals before. Like in college, we'd go to a festival. I'd sneak in a water bottle of vodka right. in between my butt cheeks, <laughs> drink the entire thing, not eat a single meal, the whole, like a cliff bar. I'd be like sucking on a uh-huh. chocolate macadamia cliff bar. Somehow survive. And then like the next day, I would just run it back. Yeah. See, I, there's no running it back in my vocabulary. It was cra- It's crazy yeah. to think about, but that's growth. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe I, I'm really curious if one day maybe I'll go to Coachella and that connects back to our conversation earlier. It's crazy to think that the best day of your life and the worst day of your life are, are yet out to there come. are yet to come. And maybe one of those could be me at a music festival one day and we'll never know. I will tell you this right now. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> people shit on me for this decision. Okay. But first of all, I'll say to, to anyone wondering, ACL is the best festival you could ever go to. The city is right there. You're in the city. So when you leave, there's no Coachella, which you leave Coachella and it's like an hour and a half to get home, even if you're a mile away, because just straight up foot traffic Mm -hmm. and then getting a ride out versus you could walk, but like it's so hard to get anywhere. Here, you're already in the city. The worst case scenario, you'd have to walk like a half mile and then you're in an actual city that's like not going to, you know, no one's going to kill you in it. Well, knock on wood. But, um... Oh, the worst decision everyone will say I ever made was we were walking by a couple of years ago to go see The Killers, which is Mr. Brown coming out of my cage. You yeah. know that song's about Matthew Gray Goobler? Huh. Dead serious. Would was not he make the that one up. He, kissing the girl? Yes, he's kissing the girl. Wow. Yeah. You can send me the Reddit link. Yeah, I'd yeah, love to read that because totally. I don't see him really yeah. fitting the bill for that, those lyrics. Yeah, that's all. It's him. That's it's fascinating. been debunked, but... yeah. It is like a very popular theory that I choose to still believe, even though it's it's fully been debunked by both Matthew and the singer of the band. But how cool that that's a rumor. Yeah. Yeah. Rumors are awesome. Yeah. Um, 
What was I going to say? Sorry. Oh, so on the way to the killers, I saw the silent disco. Oh, very fun. Talk about Rosalind Thorne. That might have been the best experience. I was laughing so hard. I was with like some of my friends from college. Literally just like seeing someone at silent disco. There's n- screaming their heart out listening to a different song you're listening to. Have you been to a silent disco? I think I went to one with like a party. Yeah. And it wasn't like a silent disco, but it, the party had a silent disco area area yeah. where, that I participated in for about four hours. This <laughs> one was like a tent and it was like 500 people uh-huh. at a silent disco. That is so fun. And it was like one was a rap channel, one was a rock channel, one was like a EDM channel. And it was like I was busting out laughing and like couldn't wouldn't have changed to see the killers mm-hmm. for anything. I feel like I that would be fun to take an edible at. Mm hmm. Speaking of, I did, I have some edibles that I feel like you might as well take now. Because how fun would that be to be high in the bonus app? Take now? Like, yeah. It, like while we're recording? Yeah, take them. Where? They're in here. here. Is that what well, these are? Yeah. So there's a few different options for you that I'm going to present to you. This is Desert Gold, which fits with the music festival vibe. But these are like a tiny, these are 2.5 milligrams, which that's not going to get you where I want you to be. What do you mean where you want me to be? I want you to be like soaring, flying, not a star in heaven that you can't reach. So maybe take two of these fives. I'm not going to take 10 milligrams of weed while we're shooting a, recording an episode no, of our it, podcast. No, but it won't hit you until the bonus episode. Okay, I'll take one of these. Yeah, and, a, and, a, and one of these because these are only like a little bit. Are you going to do any? No. I'll, I'll take a half of one. Hmm. Well, we'll take see. one of those as well. We'll see how I feel. About no, that. just take one. You'll be fine. I'm not a big weed guy. Yeah, but that's like very light. Like, why did I just do? Why did I just listen to you and didn't even blink an eye? Just take that one. I'll, look, I'll take this one with you. All right, let's move on. Okay. I don't know how this ended up going from silent disco to me. Are you just taking a little nibble of that little uh, edible that you have? A little nibble. Hmm. Wild. Okay, well. Well, I'm going to be a freak in about 10 minutes. Can you take that one? I'll no, open I'm it sweating. for you. This is like a condom. Yeah, it does. Uh, I can open it for you. No, I got it. Okay. Let's move on. Perfect. Well, while you were gone. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I did. It's like I immediately freak myself out after one little bite that I'm high. But I'm not. Oh, I got to go pick up a dog in a little bit. Do you want to tell everyone about it? Yeah, okay, that's what I was going to say. So I went home to see my parents last week. Mm -hmm. And my dog, who's an Australian Shepherd named Saki, um, he's just a lumpy beast Mm -hmm. at this point. He's old as fuck. Like, I respect the hell out of him. (laughs) (laughs) I respect the hell out of this guy. but For everything he's done. Yeah, he's really uh, put in the work, but he is a lumpy beast. Mm -hmm. And I always looked at people with old lumpy dogs, and I was like, what are you doing? Right. And that's because my last dog was hit by a school bus yes. full of kids. And so you might, never made, he never made it to the Yeah, zombie. I never had to see an old dog, yeah. you know, and like old dogs are yeah. gross. Um, and then you have one and you're like, damn, this old lumpy bitch. Yeah. Like, I, I love him to death. Yeah. I don't want to touch that like part on your butt that has the lumps on it. Well, that one would. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, he is like fully cancerous, <laughs> but he doesn't, I don't think he knows. He no. he fully eats, he runs around, he acts like a puppy. And my parents made a decision to be like, well, he's happy or he could do chemo. Right. <laughs> like, and, or we can cut off his leg and he, he just could like do chemo. went to the vet and they were like, can'ts. Can'ts, can'ts, McGee. Yeah. But funny story about my dog that was split in half by the school bus. Mm-hmm. Um, it was full of kids and it's just like a straight up dead right away. So I'm not really worried about it. But, um,. <laughs> That's it. That's like the funny part, actually. <laughs> the kids all and you saw it. Uh, my pa- my whole family did, and they didn't tell me. You weren't. You didn't see it. No, no. I was already at school. It, oh, yeah, I, okay. I had to go early okay. for soccer. I'm glad you don't have that image. Yeah, me too. But the bus driver got out and and scooped up his body and like was like, oh no. Yeah. And I was like, oof. Why'd you do that? That's so tough. Yeah, but he went out really quick and young, doing what he loved. He I, always used to get on the school bus in the morning and all the kids liked him and he would go to the front of the neighborhood uh, and get off and run home. So that's why he was doing it. I'm trying to turn this into a joke. This is one of those no, things where like, you, yes. you kind of tell someone and everyone's going to be like, oh, ugh, guys, I'm fine. I know. And it's funny. I like, hate those things when you're like, oh, look at this really depressive 
depressing thing that happened to me and you like expect to laugh and people are like, I'm so sorry. I'm not pro splitting dogs in half via school bus, but it happened. You have to find, you have to laugh or you'll cry. No, I, I always like, I think my worst fear in the world would be hitting a dog with my For car. Sure. Like I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather be the dog in that situation. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, this dog was a replacement dog. Didn't have to get an old dog. So then I went home, saw my parents' dog, and then this woman reached out. Well, I'm not going to give details just in case it doesn't work out. Right. But anyways, there's a dog waiting for me right now. His name's Sonny. He's so sweet. He's so gorgeous. He can change his name. He doesn't give a shit. But right now it's Sonny. Yeah. Um, I, that's honestly like as far as like adopting a dog and their names, that's a good one. Well, yeah. The other one that I got reached out to, his name was Jimothy. Yeah. And I talk way too much shit about other people's dog names to have a dog named Jimothy. So my mom's dog, Tucker, his name is now, but his name when we adopted him, Groot. when we adopted him was yeah. Groot. And then my other dog, Gabe, was Blackie. Oh, that's a good one. I don't, and I don't. Cleo was Cinnamon, just like. That's just a that's word like to, yeah, the day. yeah. But like we kept the C to to respect. Her, yeah, where I she mean, came from. I don't think I've ever called. One of my pets by their the name that we named them originally. Right. You end up going like, book me. yeah, beep, yeah, beep, boop, beep, yeah. Bop, bop. totally. So, um, anyways, I brought something back from my parents' house. Okay, were you gonna move on to well, something I was completely gonna, different? Because I, I was just gonna tell you about my weekend. Oh, but your it was, weekend. It was on. I'm was, so sorry. Talk no, about mine for a no, minute. it was pretty uneventful. Um, I went to a comedy show though. Mm-hmm. I went to see Meg Stalter. Love Meg Stalter. Who is just like. So, such a genius yeah. that it's like scary to be in the same room as her yeah but it's like marketed as a stand-up show and i guess it's kind of stand-up but it's mostly improv which i didn't know and is very scary to me because yeah. my like I, my biggest fear besides running over a dog would be like being called on in a crowd yeah and being crowdsourced so i had my mask like over my eyes the entire show um but it was meg stalter and friends so she brought out who else was well she brought out three people okay and here is who they are. Um, First girl, not actually quite sure. So we'll move on. Second boy, Benny Drama. Benny Drama. Yeah. Benny Drama came out. Third boy, and this is where it got dicey for yeah. me, was Judd Apatow. Right. And so he, Judd, in keeping with the theme of the night, which was interacting with the crowd, crowdsourcing, he did like one minute of stand up and then was like, okay, I'm over that. Does anybody want to pitch me a screenplay? And so I think like if you were to just like take a a room full of people that live in L.A. and are at a stand up show, like eight out of ten, like their screenplay pitches are going to be tough to sit through. That being said, the people that in that room that go ahead and volunteer to pitch their screenplays to Judd, ten out of ten going to be going to be tough to sit through. And let me just say, Connor, incredibly tough to hear people pitch their you're screenplay like, you're ideas. You're like 0 for 5 for your past comedy shows you've gone to. I was having a really tough Comedy time. Jam Night? Comedy Jam Night as well was tough. But Who was the other person that came out? Judd. So it was Judd? It was Judd, Judd Benny, and, Benny and, I, okay. and a girl that I don't know. But I would say hearing those people who willingly put themselves on the stage, t- one of the toughest things I've ever they should be on a watch list yeah, for I've, volunteering. I've ever had to sit through volunteering to yeah pitch a screenplay while other people paid for a ticket. Yeah, that's that's a really yeah. And the first guy that was pitching was pitching like the first. He, it wasn't a comedy, but he was pitching like the first ever romance. Like, m- like I don't really know exactly what he was getting at, but it was just like a trans romance, which is great. But I think Judd like didn't know what to do with that or where to go, so he kept just saying, "Well, I produce bros," <laughs> just to cover, his just bases. to kind of cover his bases, so and that was his response. Cool with that to every single um, pitch from that one guy, and then the next girl pitched uh, an astrology film about a podcaster who was really into astrology, and at that point, I had disassociated fully. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Associated, but Who that was ever thought a yeah. podcaster would be into astrology. No, uh, not me. Mm-mm. That's for darn tuning, sure. Yeah. Um, but that was, and then the third guy. At that point, I had got, gotten some air. But yeah, that was really like I think like the I only, would have loved to see that. Would, um, that'd be good. The only thing I did this weekend, really. Um, I'm about to but you went home. And I'm so excited. You went home and you brought something back. Yes, I went home and I brought something back. I think we talked about it last week. 
my idea journal. By the way, someone damned me when I talked about my awesome professor last week that I hated um, and said he was fired from the university <gasps> for being for being creepy. <laughs> I was like, I was, like when you get a you gut feeling it. about yeah. somebody, you're always right. I agree. Yeah. And I was like, this guy thinks he's God and needs to be seated. We needs to take a seat. And man, oh man, my gut feeling was correct. Sayonara. Wow. See, Congratulations. See you on the other side. Yeah. He did something. I wish, I mean, I can't read specifics because if it gets back, I don't know. It's facts, yeah. but whatever. Thank you to the person that sent me the inside scoop. But this is the assignment. I'm so excited. Oh, this is his class too? This is his class. He seems to have influenced your life a lot for someone you hated. I think that's usually how it goes. Actually, you're right. Because you can't shake yeah. it. And yeah. you almost hate that this person that you hate had that on you so yeah. so it actually sticks with you that like i think that me. i'm gonna be be quoting my landlord a lot after i move out yeah no that happened he to me with my hot water in english now, he said in english time. in english teacher i hated like inspired me to start loving to read because i was like in your face yeah and guess what i'm only gonna read trashy romances that'll that'll teach you at least you're reading yeah totally um yeah there's a lot of quotes now that i like have in my docket that are like it's it's in a notes app or a notes page called sayings i hate Uh uh-huh because they've become true yeah do you have any on the top the tippy top of your yeah i'll find them while we go there okay so essentially this this assignment was that one that i talked about last week or two weeks ago if you listen and it was the idea journal um which is incredible that i was an adult paying tens of thousands of dollars to attend a top tier school um, to go pick out a blue notebook from Target because he said pick your favorite color mm-hmm. and then write down some ideas. And just so you get a, a gist of what this is, like it is straight up, there was no rules. It was just put 100 ideas in this book and I'm going to grade you. And I got an 85. So if you're wondering why I hated this guy, it's uh-huh. because he put a subjective grade that based sucked. on... And it's not anonymous. He, yeah. We had our names in this and he did not like me because yeah. I was very outspoken about how big of a douchebag this guy was. So... I got an 85. Oh, You know what sucks is these things come full circle. Like if I was a professor, I'd probably act like him. I, w- I don't want to believe that I would, but there'd right. probably be like some underground buried things that I would do. Anyways. Yeah, I'm I think a- as a professor, if I hated a student, I would have a hard time giving them an A. You I know? think everything would have to be anonymous or your RA yeah. gives it. Wow. So here's the idea. Oh my God. It's like stuffed to the brim with fun little AIC the 85 front and center <laughs> did i say that this whole thing was just like a a, a thought process oh there's that there it's a, it's a thought process thing. it's like come up with campaigns come up with ideas inventions wow. whatever i'm like pov i'm your professor right now so what we have here in the first page is i'll show you kind of visual watchers and i'll try to explain yeah. it for just the audio listeners it's like a watercolored blob of red running down the page a watercolor blob of brown running down the page and then a watercolor blob of like more of a cream and the text that connor had written is blood runs thicker coffee quicker beer's just along for the ride awesome (laughs) this is 19 year old connor can i ask was this one beer this like white yeah stain okay that's what beer looks like when you spill it on yourself okay yeah but basically this is a poem um, and originally when I did this one, I actually made a little prick on my finger so I would bleed on the page. Totally. Spilled coffee and then did beer. That actually might be blood. Is this little piece blood? Yeah, I might have put yeah. a little bit of blood on there just so that he'd have to... Right. He'd have to Contract something. Oh, I'm worried about this one. On the eighth day, and this is... Connor, did you do this? Like, yeah. Like fully by yourself? Yeah. No, I I no tracing? Do... No. Look at these hands. Yeah, so I, that's so good. Wow. Okay. So he has two that's hands be hard to explain. Nope. reaching towards one another, and on one of the hands on the index finger, there's a little pair of Converse dangling. From well, because it. it's like when you throw co- like shoes up yeah, on a power line. Yeah. But it's the hands of creation, and the shoes are kind of on the eighth it. day. Let's keep going to that's one that's very cool. That's more audibly. Okay. No, no, no. That's not a good one. Okay. Though. Sorry. Sorry. Um. Ooh. Very cool. <laughs> this is gonna be just a page of <laughs> black scribbles on the in- like every inch covered with black scribbles. But if you at- look closely enough, if you kind of open the page, there's a cutout of a person, like a little gingerbread person. Oh, <laughs> wow! 
We're going to want to skip that page. Plot twist on the other side. That's very edgy that we'll skip. <laughs> we'll skip out of respect. Um, um, I don't know what that means. So, gonna so basically, I'm understanding why I got 85 <laughs> now. <laughs> like, I feel bad about why I was so rude about this dude. Oh, that's oh. good. Oh, hello, Connor. Oh, my gosh. We need to skip that page as well. Yes. Wow, okay, defrosting meat sucks. College solution, and then Connor's illustrating the college solution to defrosting meat as following. So what we're seeing here is an outlet, plugged into the outlet, hair curler, he's called it. Um, fully looks like a penis. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> um, so that hair curler is going to be next to a log labeled beef and connor has labeled the beef frozen <laughs> is this gonna get through to the people watching i i think it, the this one will i think this one will touch a lot of people <laughs> let's do one more Ooh, that's actually good that's good okay this is oh cool. that's a good one so connor's taped in a cigarette on t uh, he drew a gun taped a cigarette onto the gun and it's shooting a pair of lungs very cool. <laughs> Very cool. I can't believe you got an 85. Oh, this is nice. He's taped into Advil's. And. Oh, that's good. Here's one. Okay. One of my best ideas was tearing this one out. And wow. it, the page is ripped and there's yeah. like a little. This is bad. Let's. let's no, we it's have to not stop. bad. It's not bad. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. Here's a piece of tinfoil. <laughs> and it says this page is from the future. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing wow here's a q-tip <laughs> okay i want to like go on record and think connor w was co really complaining about the 85 but <laughs> this says only you q-tip hot glued in onto the page can prevent ear infections <laughs> here's a visual oh i'm sweating so bad wow this is Wow. Oh, that's really funny. He cut out like a big like flask shape in the pages. And then the text is wasn't deep enough for a flask. That's pretty good. I think, Connor, I think some, this is good. I don't think you can grade this kind of stuff. But yeah. I think an 85 makes sense. Father, I have a confession. I stole my roommate's raisin bran this morning. You are one of a kind, and Connor. What does it say? They're just super good. Okay. <laughs> I agree with that, actually. Maybe I'll revisit this some of these ideas and see yeah. if I can. Ooh, oh, that oh, photosynthesis, very nice, and that's a leaf. What would that mean? I think I know exactly what you were going for here. So he's taped in a leaf, and in the leaf, in the middle of the leaf, it looks like an Instagram notification. These were the old Instagram notifications. Yeah, it looks like zero, like zero likes. Zero likes, but why, why photosynthesis? Because <laughs> there's a leaf. So no one likes. Maybe you're saying like this is the modern day photosynthesis. Like instead of caring about nature. We care about likes. This is the new. Yeah, of course we do. Yeah. I love likes. Yeah. Um, Here's some glass. You are. You, you, are, you are art. I taped <laughs> a broken mirror in this page and said, you are art. <laughs> <laughs> I should have gone straight to jail. I shouldn't have even gotten a grade. What is falling out of this page? This looks like a gum wrapper. Oh, this one looks cool. It's a little astronaut falling out. Oh, here it is. Here's a good one. God, I think I'm like... You were on like, to something. I was on to something with a lot of these, but I was clearly doing it like... So here's here's a little astronaut. That's cool. Do you want me to hold your mic? And it says, out of ideas, starting to relate more and more to Sandra Bullock and gravity. Hopeless. Stressed. Extremely aware of the weight of my existence and approaching demise. That's good. Yeah, well, I thought that was going to prevent an 85. I guess not. Um, okay, I guess there's no condom in here. I feel like that was my saving grace for this little segment. But Thank you for sharing that with us. It's not. Didn't you say that you brought something Kinda. similar? Well, back in the day when I used to just like read my old diaries on TikTok, I just was coming through all my childhood belongings, and I must have thought this one was funny because I took a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And it's an old report card from my fifth grade PE teacher. So I was just going to read that to you so we could see if what he said kind of still holds up today. You ready? I'm so ready. Sorry. I'm done. Um, This is from June 8th, 2007. Grade 5. Yeah. Okay. 
Brooke is a quiet, pleasant individual with a big heart. This is not going <laughs> to end well, is it? Why? Because the intro, if you're introing like that. <laughs> Just like setting me up. Yeah. For failure. Where's the butt? I think the only, Brooke is a quiet, I don't think I was quiet. I think I was probably nonverbal in PE class due to either like the physical strain of it all or just being absolutely miss. Gonna take the other half of this thing. Okay. I'm gonna go on. Wow. Are you feeling any effects yet? I don't know. That idea journal really sobered me up. Okay. Um, Her willingness to participate, listen, and do what is asked of her is truly appreciated. That's sweet. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, Brooke may not be the strongest or most athletic person, but her striving to do her best is what matters. True. That's literally all we could ask yeah. for. Uh, Brooke has developed into a young lady who knows her strengths and her weaknesses. And I would like to say that's still true today. Yeah. So aware of my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Some signs of this development are her performances in the pool. <laughs> yeah. This is my autobiography. Yeah. Where she continues to work on her strokes and has knocked over 17 seconds of her 50 yard challenge time. That's a lot. That's like 50 as yards long as it takes back to get across and forth. That, that's one lap across and one back. Yeah. So that's a back and forth. It's incredible. 17 seconds to knock off of that. I don't know why he's like not like sto stoked on me. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I'm curious where this is. I think that was it. Gonna take a turn. Well, 17 seconds. Were you drowning the first couple times you did it? Like, were your I, hands tied together? I think I was working really hard in the pool. Yeah. Like, I think I just, like, got that much better. Oh, wow. that's incredible. Because I love the that's pool. That's something that you should be really proud yeah. of. Yeah. So, overall, I don't know why I thought that was so funny and kind of having a similar experience to what you had with your idea journal. <laughs> I'm starting to think we both should have reviewed these beforehand. <laughs> yeah. To see if they would have Totally. Been. I just liked when he said she's not the most athletic person. But yeah. She knows her strengths and weaknesses. And I was like, you know what? So true. Yeah. So true. It's true. Yeah. I'd like something like that. I'd like to read my all of my reports home where he, Connor keeps correcting me. Oh, Connor, you were one of those? Yeah. Did you raise your hand a lot? No, I just talked. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. It holds true. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Um, I just want to take a little break and tell everyone thanks for listening. Because I know <laughs> <laughs> if you're still here, it really means a lot. That's really sweet. Of course. Um. So are you sweating? No, I gotta take my pumpkin off because okay. I'm. Take your pumpkin off. It's starting to weigh down on my legs a little. Totally. bit. Totally, I'm gonna look at um. Kind of. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you all weekend, and I was actively like not texting you about it because I wanted to wait to tell you here. Tell me here. You know how people say break a leg in yeah. theater? Yeah. Do you know why? No. This is gonna blow your mind. They say break a leg because they hope you get in the cast. That's awesome. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Like, because when you break your leg, you would get a cast. So they're saying break a leg, like, good luck. We hope you get in the cast of the show. That's really good. Isn't that beyond? Yeah, but now you you don't get a cast for breaking your leg. You get a boot now, so. You could get, uh, if it's a really bad break, which we you'd hope. you get a cast. We hope you would get a big break. Oh, my God. I'm. Uh, there's more. Yeah. It's, this is layered. Oh, my God. We hope you get a big break. I would probably So that say, you get a cast. Like, it's your big break in theater. Break a wrist, I would say now, probably, or like break a... Break a rib. No, you wouldn't get a cast for that. Yeah. 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 We could. We should make more of those up. Wow. So I just, that's kind of what's been... Yeah, that was really, like the, really the, weighing you yeah. down this week. Really adding those 17 seconds back on your mind this week. Yeah. Um. Also, I've been really into Facebook groups recently. Like, yeah. By the way, we have a BNC Facebook group. Yeah, wait, we should... We should remind everybody yeah, about that. We have a BNC Facebook group. It's called Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. And I think like, I kind of forget how Facebook works because I, I haven't been on it in a few years except to be on these groups now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's join it. I think you literally just look up Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast and we can just discuss things all Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast related, related. in like a forum type way. All things. Yeah, yeah totally. I had to uh, report some on the other day. On the page? Yeah, because they kept, like, advertising their product. That's and one of the rules like, for a lot of those play. groups is you can't, you know, if you look for a house or something, they're like, yeah. you can't promote your own yeah. stuff on it's here. It's just, like, bad. It's a not good etiquette. It's, it's, it's bad. It's taste. bad etiquette. Yeah, for sure. But the only other, I'm a part of three Facebook groups. Be Brooke and Connor make a podcast. Uh, knit A knitting group where these, like, sweet little old women share their knitting, which is just, like, the sweetest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And... 
a survivor group that I joined in March 2020 because I was one of the first people in Philly to get COVID. Mm, like, you were ground ever. zero. I was one or what, patient, patient zero. Patient zero. Um, and so at that point, I thought it like I was fully dying. Like yeah. you thought like yeah. this was the time where you thought if you got COVID, like you're you're going to gonna die. Yeah. Um, so I joined a survivor group on Facebook and I'm still in it. And these people that had COVID in March 2020 are still posting like about their long COVID mm -hmm. and just the symptoms that they still have. And it is like a little bit concerning to me because I think like what they're posting is actually not long COVID. It's like it, and they should chronic illness. It's like like terminal, oh, and no. they should move forward with like going to the ER yeah. like immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny, but it's just like every single post in this group. This morning around 4 a.m. Period. I walked from the kitchen to where I was sleeping. I collapsed. My legs just gave out. I cut the door frame. Could not hold myself up. Has anyone experienced this? And I'm just like, I don't think that's the March 2020 COVID. And I think you should get checked out. And it's every post in this group. Can you give me another one? Yeah. Is this enjoyable? Yeah, it is. It's, it's It makes me wonder because sometimes like if I'm grabbing the door frame and falling over, I wouldn't be like, oh, long COVID. I'd be like, right. Damn, I'm an I'd idiot. I'd be like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Or like, Shit, I forgot how to walk. Shoot. Like, I'm going to take myself to the hospital. I still wouldn't. I don't think. Well, I give think me another one. If I was, if I don't know, I'm I looking for a of, good one. I mean, my brain fog. I could just brain that's, fog. That's probably a long COVID. Yeah, got to blame it on something. Okay, but sorry, I'm looking for a real <laughs> good one. No. You want to practice your stand up while I look for yeah. a good one? Um, I had a really funny idea. Well, no, I don't want to give any of that away. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, are you guys having fun listening? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, like, I don't know why, like, all of a sudden they're like, not that, they're not that bad anymore. Did you guys not answer about okay. having fun listening because you're not having fun listening? Ew, so we're having fun. so much fun. Okay, well, I'll tell you while you're looking for that, that when I got home from uh, my trip this week, that your kugel was still in my fridge. Yes. And it had grown almost legs to walk out because my fridge power went out while I was gone, which is just such a blessing in disguise. Because I had to clean out my fridge because everything... No, the kugel's gone? Yeah, it had grown like a second kugel oh, damn. On, on the side of it. I guess like that's a tough one to go bad because of all the dairy products in it. Yeah, it was really gnarly. And, Sorry. Um, if you can imagine what kugel would smell like after what I, I, don't, yeah. what I think must have been 10 days mm -hmm. with no power in that fridge... Well, wow. I'm so sorry to have participated that in some small way. No, I just, I should have taken a picture, but I really couldn't bear to I the know. side of it. I'm sorry. Damn. Let me try to. That's sad to think of the, that the kugel had to come to that end. That, that kugel never knew that like the best day and the worst day of its life was coming. And that was the worst day for it. It was foul. Damn. Yeah. Okay. You ready for another long COVID? Yeah. You I've lost two molars in the last two years. Just completely crumbled and broke off. Like, babe, like. I do, like go to the di like that's it's not long. I don't think that's a symptom of long COVID at the end of the day. Did she did this person say has anyone else experienced this? I could tell her. Yeah, I, this I, is all just like checking in about long COVID. I could tell her that I lost a molar at that Mexican restaurant because <laughs> I put it down on my this plate. This person gets fevers every single night. This person has shortness of breath and dry nasal passages, True. which like that's fine. That yeah. feels fine. Every Sunday. Yeah. Wow. People are like literally like. You should maybe make a post and take take one for the team and say you all need to go to the doctor for like a physical. Small hard purple clots. <laughs> like, whoa! I don't even know what that could possibly mean. They should add a doctor to the group. Ongoing nose scabs. Drop in testosterone. Wow. Third yeah. time in the ER. Whoa. This is really dark. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Whoa. It's just like, okay, yeah, sad, scary. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of that is just like, go to the doctor yeah. as well as the ER in addition. 100%. Yeah. That's a scary group of people. That'd be, that'd be like, um, I don't want to say anything negative. Totally. But just like, based on what they're telling me, their symptoms are giving zombie. No, Yeah. I, and I fully, like, I don't want this to come off like I'm a, a long COVID denier. Yeah. I, trust me, brain fog, I'm I'm almost brain dead. Like, fully. Like, if you attach me to a machine, it would just kind of be, be, be yeah, be flatlining. Yeah. 
So I get it. Like I've I'm suffering from long COVID as well. I just think like when you start to collapse in the kitchen, go, go to see the, someone. Go about to that. the doc. Yeah. Um. Well, there not a lot happened in pop, pop culture. Yeah. This week, except did you hear what happened with the orange M M&M? and M? No. Okay. Basically, the thing about the we're orange back to M&M, talking about the M M&M. and M. Yeah, the orange M M&M and M is is now Gen Z's icon. It's now a Gen Z icon because of its extreme anxiety. Uh, before I give my Does take, Gen Z need another icon? Is that yeah? No, I don't think they do. No, no. I have kind of like a take that I'm nervous to share because it's going to sound insensitive. I think I'll be able to back you up. Okay, and I like I think everyone knows this, but I have pretty severe anxiety mm-hmm. and always have. I just don't think every single person needs anxiety at this at this time. I agree. I think that people almost feel like they have to have anxiety because. It's a great thing that we've normalized talking about mental health so much. I think that's amazing. But now I think people almost feel bad like to not not have anxiety. I get that. And I'm just like, no, like, that's fine. I also think we just normalize a lot. Like people say, like, I have anxiety as in like I have an anxiety disorder when they're just feeling feelings of just like you have anxious feelings and you're worrying. Like that doesn't necessarily mean you have an anxiety disorder. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's something that I've always thought about because it used to kind of get on my nerves when people would say like, oh, I'm having a panic attack like in high school. And I was like, bitch, no, you're not. Yeah. You'd be curled up in like a little ball. Yeah. Yeah. But I've gotten over that because I used to be really bad about like telling my siblings like you guys, you don't have anxiety because I'm the only one in the world that can have anxiety. And then my parents were like, you have to stop that immediately. Yeah. Because other people that aren't you can also have anxiety. And I was like, okay, that's an interesting point. I guess yeah. you're right. So I do acknowledge that other people besides me can have anxiety. Yeah. I just feel like it doesn't have to be every single person. Totally. Um, I was like, oh, I have anxiety. And then everyone started getting it. And I was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. So I don't say it anymore. But just, my mom and parents were always like. Um, I don't want to. Pl- like, of course you can say you have anxiety. And of course you do ha- have anxiety. I don't want to. I don't mean. No, to, I just. I, I don't mean to police that. It's just sometimes I'm just like. Not a, not everyone needs to say needs to have it. Well, it's, it's not like, to say you don't have I, it. I, yeah, no, I don't care. But um, my mom was always like a big like, oh, I'm having anxiety. That's not real. Mm-hmm. Have a banana and go for a Whoa. walk. Go get some sunlight. It actually helps. Sometimes I There's wish. There's a lot of stuff like that that helps. Sometimes I never know. Like sometimes I wish, and this is like a serious conversation. It's not like a funny conversation. If that's okay. No. I'll try to make a joke out of it. Okay. Go ahead. No, I just sometimes wish like, cause when I was little, like my parents were like, oh my God, like this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Ready? We'll like, put this music in the background to make this funny. Dun, 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 dun. And then yeah. you'd be like, your parents okay. said this bitch is crazy. No, they were like, oh my God, like she needs help, which is great. Cause yeah. they did. And it's like, I'm so thankful that I was like in therapy so young. But on the other hand, it's like, what if I had just gotten the message that like it's okay like this is normal yeah people worry it happens instead of like oh my god like she needs help yeah like i wonder if i would be maybe a a little different today but it's hard because like grass is always grass is always greener because i bet if my parents like oh you're fine i I, she would not be fine yeah you know so i never you know totally totally so that's i don't know i can't answer that i agree i think like it's probably just like a spectrum just like everything yeah. else everything well, else is spectrum like, it's crazy like i can't really think of one thing that's not a spectrum i can't either it's so <laughs> weird you said that but like looking back i'm like i've i'm not like a depressed person right but like looking back i, I have h- had a like depression you know before yeah and it's like it's those times when you're like but looking back totally. i'm like ew yeah that was that dark. was rough it's always hard to to look back yeah on those kinds of things but um Anyways, let's anyway, say something so the, funny. Yeah, but I'm just like the orange M M&M, and M like has brought up a lot of feelings for me, just like in terms of my childhood you, and just you, the way I think about how mental health is talked yeah. about now, which I don't think was the intention of everyone in talking about the green M M&M. and M. I think everyone's like, "Hot, this Wait, is so funny." Did, did, I'm going through the goddamn ringer thinking about my whole experience growing up well, with anxiety. Did they? What how, how did 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 the M and M Incorporated come out and be like? Actually, guess what? We now have an M and M that has anxiety. I don't know if it was like M and M LLC that came up. 
give him a show. Like give it at this point. Like that. There's like, a whole show to be written, and this guy. It's it's gonna be the twelve dwarves, the seven dwarves. I don't know. Dwarves. Like I think this is just like my trauma. Like hate to use the T word, but like my childhood trauma, like coming out and like this Eminem's pissing me the fuck off. Like looking at him, like ooh, like I'm like ooh, <laughs> I'm having a panic attack. Like I want to see an Eminem like hooked up to a. a a anesthesia monitor like needing to be knocked out because it's panic attack is so bad like that's what i want to see like give that bitch some zoloft <laughs> you know remember the orange m m apparently he's a gen z icon now see that's what i'm saying it's just like we're almost like <laughs> no, sorry no, i don't i don't need to like keep going on this it's just like i don't know it's bringing up something in me no look at this this last sentence Yes, the green lady Eminem got new shoes while the orange Eminem is grappling with his mental health, exclamation point. It's like anxiety. It's like not trendy. That's I guess that's what I'm Oh, no, but it, but it is trendy. It is trendy yeah. now, and I think it pisses yeah. me off. Because I'm like, guess what? It's not fun. Your feelings are valid. Yeah. I'm going to get in trouble for all the ways that I made this a joke, but I just no. also made a joke out of my dog. Getting no, by the school I bus, think so. both of us feel more, com- feel more comfortable talking about those things. Yeah. With joking. Yeah. So I, Well, every now and then, like, I've never taken medication for anxiety, but every now and then when I'm, like, feeling my head's going to explode, I'll take a Klonopin and be like, yeah. you're fucking weird for ever panicking about how totally fine everything is. That's I'm also like, sucks when, like, that those, like, good moments when you're like, oh, my God, like, what? what? Why were you ever stressed? Yeah. And then when you're stressed again, you can't remember, like, why you felt those good moments. Yeah. Whoa. B and C just got... Had a breakthrough. Had a breakthrough, yeah. BNC make a B. I honestly cannot wait to talk about the orange M&M with my therapist tomorrow because I think that brought up a lot of valuable stuff did you, about my Did childhood. you ever figure out if your therapist listens to this? Um, I don't think she does. Okay, well, she broke to me like two of her. No, 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 no. <laughs> just in case. Can you cut that? We can talk about it in the bonus. Can I just give, like, I've seen so many movies recently in theaters and just ones that have come out. Yeah. Do you mind if I very quickly no touch on them? Touch on those. Yeah. Okay. First comes first comes to first. Is that a saying or is it worst comes to worst? Is it worst comes to worst or worst comes to worse or worst comes to worse? Are you thinking of first things first? First things first. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah, but just circling back to the worst comes to worst saying. Is it worse and worst or worse and worse or worst and worse? Worst comes to worst. It's worst comes to worst for everybody that was wondering. First comes to first. I saw bros. First things first. I was so excited for bros. Yeah. Saw it on opening night. Yeah. At the end of the day, it was the Billy Eichner show. And this all comes down to if you like him or not. Because he just wrote him. He wrote basically bros as a fan fiction. Yeah. That Billy wrote to put himself in. God bless him. I would do the same thing if I ever wrote a movie. Unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of the of the Billy persona. And so seeing his character only amped up about 45,000 percent. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't for me. It wasn't good. It, you can just he, say it wasn't he was good. not. It, I've been on. Twitter. No, I'm not ready to say it's not good because I think so many parts were valuable. I loved the other guy in it. I think he was. Billy's character was was really tough to watch and he was the entire thing. Yeah. So I was so excited and that unfortunately was not my favorite film. Yeah. However, I think there were some good parts and I'm glad that a movie like that was made by a popular studio at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Hope there's more That's without Billy. Yeah, it sucks. You can't really argue with numbers. They got they made half of what they projected. I know. That sucks. And I, I, I can't remember the, if I said this on here. I, I definitely said this. But it's weird that the marketing must have been out of this world budget-wise for this movie. Yeah. And it's crazy. This is a tweet from somebody. I'm not taking this in. But they said that it's bizarre that this flopped because it felt like Billy Eichner was under my bed forcing me as I went I know, to sleep like, to go see this movie every day. I don't know how he doesn't know. Like when you do something like that, when you try to force someone to see something, like they're going to be oppositional. Yeah. You know what's awesome? And not see it. You know what sells? Huh. You know what sex. sells? Over sex. What? Not really caring if they go to see it or not. Like, don't worry, darling. Avatar. Don't worry, darling. Them not addressing a, f- a piece of the speculation. Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine how much money they made. Do we know? Probably a m- billion? A lot. I don't really have a sense. Not a billion, I don't think. Five billion? I don't think they touched B. B. Uh, the B? The letter B. Whoa. Let's see. 
they made nineteen point two million dollars. I wonder how and how much was the budget? Open oh, they made. Okay, so that factors in the budget. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Opens it. to worry some nineteen point two million. I think they projected more. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was worried. Because Harry Styles and Florence Pugh probably. Oh, so the 35 budget was thirty five million. So if they made nineteen, they still net, right? That's factoring in the budget. The nineteen mil, Leon. It's not o- opening weekend was nineteen million. They pay these people like Harry Styles. Imagine what they had to pay him for him to break his hundred night in a row tour right. at the Madison Square Garden. Well, to that come was be filmed about two years before the Madison Square. Garden the budget. Before. Oh, it grossed thirty eight point yeah. nine, and, okay. and they spent thirty five million dollars. So they, they made a profit. N- no. Right. No. Yes. No gross is not gross. Income is not net oh, income. It's net the would exact be opposite. After, after I failed finance, that's why I <laughs> switched my major from business. Gross to in my head, gross is is the same word as is net. gross the same as net. Guys, okay, we have to we have to okay, move on. Okay, like, I can't do this. Okay. I watched um, where the crowd ads sing on the plane. Incredible. Started crying. Incredible. The interesting piece of that is we were talking about it last night, and you actually like. Didn't see the beginning Didn't or the end. Didn't see the beginning or the end. So you were like, it's just okay. And then I explained the end. The end and you said, that's the best movie I've ever seen. Even though Gotta you re-watch didn't quite it. see it. Gotta rewatch it. So yeah, that's a great one. Believe it or not, the beginning and the end are the beginning and the end important are key, pieces, are of key the movie. pieces of the puzzle. I saw Amsterdam in theater. Yeah. That's the one with everyone in it. Yeah. Christian Bale, Margot Robbie. Um it just like insane. Rami Malik, who I forgot. I like I, he was a tier one for me at one point in my life. That yeah. toad? No, like Freddie Mercury. That movie changed my life. I must have seen that 18 times in theaters. Rami Malik is one of the Rami, scariest people. No. Rami Malik is one of the scariest people that's walked. Oh, I think he's just like in time. exquisite inside and out. But that movie was not for me either, oh, okay. unfortunately. Damn. Just like incredibly boring. Did you um, just see that Russia came out with like a deep fake entire TV show featuring Rami Arna? Margot Mommy. Robbie, oh. um, Adam Driver, and it's a bunch. It's just actors from Russia, and they just deep faked a listers from the United States onto their faces. I just don't get it. And so they don't technically have to pay like Margot Robbie, but but it's like, is that really going to draw people? Like, if it's like, if that's targeting like Margot Robbie fans, because it's like, oh look, Margot Robbie's in this, you're going to want to see it because you love Margot Robbie. People know that's not Margot Robbie. Let me raise this question to you. Yeah. If someone deep faked, say Harry Styles was good wasn't qu- actually good question. in Don't Worry Darling. Yeah. And we've never seen him act, and it's just his face going down on Florence Pugh in scene one, right. act one. Would you go see it? If he was a deep fake? Yeah. 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 You would. Whoa, you put that in. You would, and guess opinion. what? They'd be paying him. Whoa. Yeah. Nothing, because it would be me on screen, and they'd just deep fake him. Whoa. And I'd take like a like rent. I think Harry Styles is a, an extenuating circumstance in in terms of deep faking. Okay, because just because he's like has such a cult following, I just think well, like think people like Margot, Margot Rob, Robbie. Does she have a cult? Like yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she maybe does. maybe so like like Wolf of Wall Street people have, you know, and whatever else she's in. Um, had to turn off Meet Cute, which is that Pete Davidson one. Yeah, and that taught me a valuable lesson that not everything Pete Davidson. Davidson is in like has to be the best thing I've ever seen which is like a tough thing to learn yeah um but that's a movie where you relive the same day over and over again which is my least favorite genre of anything in the world um are you caught up on the patient no but you can tell me I'm not gonna watch anymore really it's it's so good nah it's so good not for me too slow really I think it's speedy just kill someone they did okay cool they did they killed uh, they should have killed oh spoiler alert spoiler alert though I don't think that really matters there are a lot of people that could be killed um but yeah, I love, I'm loving that. And then the last thing I saw is Luckiest Girl Alive, which is like the number one m- movie on Netflix right now with Mila Kunis. That was incredible, but also so hard to watch. Interesting. Just in terms of like trigger warning, sexual oh. assault, like so hard to watch. Yeah, and like sucks. no one knew that's what the movie was about. So I'm seeing a lot of things on TikTok. It's like, I had no idea. Like that's what was going to happen because it's not marketed that way. And like people just like were kind of accosted by those scenes which sc- scary because they were really tough Oof. so trigger warning if you want to watch that movie but it was it was really good um anyway that's it i gotta recap. i have to go pee you gotta piss yeah all right then let's end i gotta it go piss girl gotta go piss girl yeah
So we can go ahead to the bonus. Yeah, we got to roll into bonus because I am shoes feeling off. Insane. Um, and we, we hope to see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay, go piss girl. Okay. Bye. This week on Close Friends. I think I got too high. <laughs> 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 so like not people. What's up? What else? <laughs> Breathe in. Take a deep breath. Do you believe in God? Very cool. If you're watching a high episode, you know it's going to go one of two ways. And it's gone the second way. Sign up on TMGstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode. <laughs>